The biggest trend in PC building right now is adding screens to everything. Lee and Lee is adding them to fans. I recently built in a case that has a screen built right into the front of it and AIO pump blocks have them in pretty much every single line. But so far it has been limited mainly to AIO coolers. Deepcool said, no, we can put it on a CPU cooler and we can charge less than a hundred dollars for it. Yeah, that's right. This, this whole thing, uh, it runs around like 70, 80 bucks with RGB and a screen. This thing's gonna be interesting. And if it performs well enough, it's got an easy recommendation for me. So let's get into the box and actually see what's going on here. Hello and welcome. My name is Wolfie. You're watching Greater Than Pi, and today we're taking a look at the AK620 Digital. Now, if you are not subscribed to this channel, consider subscribing because we do crazy stuff like this all the time. And if you are subscribed, seriously, thank you for coming back and watching my content again. It really, it does a lot for us. All those comments and likes and everything just, it helps us actually be engaged and grow the channel. And I just really appreciate you. I really do. So the AK620, yeah, the 620 digital. There's actually a couple different versions of this one. There's a smaller single tower, this is the double tower. And overall, they just look good. There's a white and a black version. Deep Cool's AK series is known for being very performance heavy, but also very affordable. Um, I did see this first at, I think it was Computex and Remember only like one person covering it. And I think it was hardware in box. I could be wrong. It could be gamers nexus because this is the kind of thing that they would love to see. Either way, Steve took a look at it. All right. Very well packaged. I will give it that. And this right here. Okay. Like that little detail having like little pinchy things would be our accessories box, which contains mounting hardware, a screwdriver, thermal goop, and instructions, along with a fan splitter. Phew. And then here is our cooler. It's already fully assembled, ready to go. Nice. All right, I like to see that. So, Right here, we have our screen, which has a very clear warning to not uh, remove it. Oh, cool. Kind of crunchy. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that's a that's a screen. All right. And then it has this thing that Deep Cool did where they actually this pattern isn't just for uh, looks. It's also to increase the surface area. So we've got a really large fan here which looks like it's gonna have pretty decent RAM clearance and can be removed easily. And then a fan in here that cannot be removed as easily. So I may need to look at the instructions because it looks like the only way to tighten this down is to take everything apart and install it. But yeah, and then let's take a look at this cold plate. Oh, it's just beautiful. It's a very nice looking CPU cooler and that has been polished, so. That's very, very nice to see, very high quality. How does the screen get powered though? I'm guessing it's through, that's the RGB controller. And this is through USB. Okay, so it takes a USB, which is gonna be at the bottom of your motherboard to power that screen. And it just, I mean, it looks spectacular. Let's go ahead and get this installed. Uh, run some benchmarks, run some B-roll, and uh, yeah, I mean, if it's good, it, it's it's got an easy win here. So uh, let's let's do that. The install of this cooler is actually pretty interesting. The screen itself is actually hold on with magnets, and has a cable that runs through the center channel of the heatsink itself, and it's really only held in with just a bit of friction. So it's much easier to remove the screen than I thought it would be. And the install requires that, much like I predicted, 
you take everything out of it. The middle fan, the screen, and the rear fan. After that, it's very similar to a Noctua SecuFirm type install. You put your standoffs into the default back plates, and then you just screw it down with the appropriate two screws and included screwdriver. Reassemble by putting the middle fan in and then the rear fan and of course a screen to cover up all of the pieces. The install itself was relatively painless. The most difficult part of it was actually finding a place to put all of the wires since there were two fan cables that were daisy chainable to put together into a single header. A RGB header which on my motherboard, there were two different locations that I could put it in, and it is also daisy chainable with any other RGB component that you might have, and the USB, which has to run all the way at the bottom of the case. And I actually found that the best way to run this one was actually underneath the GPU instead of going to the back of the case. It just wasn't as convenient that way. And overall, it was a fairly painless install. As you can see from here, I do it very quickly, and it fits very nicely into this build. So we've tested it and well, it, it's a good cooler. The Deep Cool makes very solid air coolers, particularly at fairly low price points. And the AK620 Digital versus the AK620 are gonna be solid coolers no matter what. And the numbers pretty much prove it. Gaming at a light workload, this would be like your Fortnite, Rocket League, Genshin Impact is a surprisingly light workload. We're seeing like, you know, 55C, which is up from like 45C idle on our system, which has a Ryzen uh, 6000 series processor, which those are surprisingly hot. PSO2 kind of represents a mild workload with a lot of compile and decompile. And since it's an MMO, lots of characters running around and that got to like 70 degrees Celsius. And then Starfield was our heavy workload for the CPU and that got us up to 88 degrees Celsius. And if you hit it with something like Cinebench, it will easily hit 95 degrees Celsius, but that's more of a behavior of the processor and less of the cooler. Overall, it's pretty quiet. It looks phenomenal. And the install process was really easy. It's really hard to go wrong with this air cooler, but in the current case that it's in, it is unfortunately being hindered ever so slightly. That case would benefit probably from a top firing AIO with a screen on it because that would kind of just tie the aesthetic together. And that will probably be the next thing that I actually take a look at for that computer. Overall, it performs really well and the price is just unbeatable. And when you can get it, honestly, if you're looking for something that looks great, is affordable and has a temperature sensor built in, there's probably no better option. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And while you're down there, why don't you check out our merch shop? Maybe consider subscribing. And uh, hopefully, you know, if you stick around for a bit, you'll see some other cool stuff that you might like. Like maybe an AIO with a screen that might or may not be made from Lee and Lee or could be made by MSI. I haven't decided on which one I'm getting yet. Let's just say uh, there's definitely going to be a follow-up video. And heck, even a head-to-head -head comparison between this cooler and an AIO, which could be interesting. So, I'll see you in the next video. Wolfie, out.